everybody, welcome back to No DQ and A video here on NoDQ.com, of course, and the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. This is the first No DQ video in over a year. March 17th, 2019 was the last edition of No DQ and A video. Today's date, May the 12th, 2020. Good to be back with you guys. Thank you for requesting no DQ&A video coming back and wanting to see it return. Your wish is my command. Got your questions using the hashtag PAIV over at twitter.com slash Aaron Rift. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first question comes from Big G, no DQ.com slash Big G long time no dq.com contributor he says when do you think oscar and otis will cash in the money in the bank briefcases will they cash in successfully or who will have a failed cash in first of all i'm hoping neither of them have a failed cash in as far as oscar goes i feel like it's frustrating when i take the time to answer a question and then the question immediately becomes dated. It's very frustrating. I would have liked to have seen somebody actually hold the money in the bank briefcase for a period of time, but it is what it is. Things happen. I talked about Otis, so let's go ahead and move on here. I had to edit a little bit. My apologies, guys. One of my criticisms of the money in the bank concept over the past few years has been that people have not been holding on to the briefcase. That's part of the fun of it, waiting throughout the year to see when the briefcase holder will actually cash in. And the last few years, it's happened right away, and then we have almost an entire year with nobody cashing in money in the bank. I'm hoping it'll be saved until SummerSlam at the earliest, or maybe when we get live audiences back. That would be nice. That would be a good thing to do. I would hold off on it until we start having people in the arenas again. This one comes from Chris Cahill. Welcome back, he says. Thank you for that, Chris. Instead of Otis cashing in the main titles, could we see Otis cash in on the tag team titles instead? That is definitely one theory that's out there. And Otis himself even said in an interview that he's going to cash in money in the bank with his partner Tucker and go for the tag team titles. It would be something different that we have not seen up to this point. I would not be against that. I like Otis. I think he's a very entertaining character. But at the same time, I don't see Otis's character as a long-term main eventer. I feel like he is really standing out on his own, doing his own thing, but you could do a storyline for the tag team titles. There's a lot of different things you could do with Otis. You could go the tag team route. You could go the singles route and maybe have Tucker cost Otis his WWE Universal title opportunity out of jealousy turn Tucker heel. Another theory, another idea could be Mandy Rose getting an opportunity, Otis giving his contract to Mandy and she uses it to win the SmackDown women's title. What do you guys think? Leave a comment and let me know your opinion on which title Otis should go after. This next question comes from longtime no DQ supporter, Kayfabe Candy Ass. He says, How concerned are you with the current ratings trend in WWE? Do you think fans will come back quickly when things return to normal? And will guys like Drew McIntyre remain over with so many missing out on his run? Great question. It's really uncertain what's going to happen with WWE viewership once things return to normal. I've said for the longest time that fans are a creature of habit. 
And now people are starting to get out of the habit of watching WWE. The numbers have been declining slowly, but the process has been speeding up due to COVID-19. I think some of them will come back and I think part of it will depend on WWE, what they're able to present. I think there will be initial interest when fans are able to come back to the arenas. I think if WWE can really come up with some compelling storylines and ideas for when fans come back, they might be able to generate some buzz and get the product hot again. But again, I think that that will largely depend on WWE. It might be a while for WWE to get their numbers back to anything close to what it was even a year ago. But if WWE puts in the work, I think they will rebound from this. It just might take a while. This next question comes from longtime No DQ contributor Jerry Slaughter, the general, at general underscore JSJ. He says, post-pandemic, where do you see fan attendance at wrestling shows being? Bigger, or do you think the empty arena shows have jaded a bunch of the audience? Like the previous question from Mr. Candy Ass, I think it's uncertain. I think initially, fans will be eager to return. I think people will be, they're already having the itch to see wrestling live again. There's gonna be a good amount of fans, I think, that will jump at the opportunity to attend a WWE event. I know there will be some people out there that are going to be nervous about it, not necessarily being jaded with the current situation with television, but I think just people being afraid to go to an event with a large amount of people, there's gonna be those people out there, but I think that there will be enough fans eager to show up that the first couple shows WWE will be in good shape. I think whenever this starts to die down, WWE announces Madison Square Garden, they're going to get 18,000 people there. The question is long term because we all know COVID-19 has made a serious impact on the economy and as much as some fans will want to go financially, will they be able to? I think WWE will be okay because my impression, and I know this is what Vince has talked about during the last WWE conference call, ticket prices will probably drop. When events start happening again, buildings will charge less for rent, and as a result, ticket prices will be down and it will be more affordable for people to attend WWE events. So I think in the long term, WWE will be okay, but there's still, like I said, a lot of uncertainty. Got one more question today from CanadaPupLover at gmail.com saying, with the new normal that is now wrestling, do you see it lasting a long time because of the COVID or no? It depends on getting a vaccine, having a cure for COVID-19. The new normal, is shows with no people in the building. Now, over time, as restrictions start to ease up, we'll start seeing fans again at WWE and AEW events. There might be the social distancing where you have two people and then you have three or four empty seats and then another two people. You might only have a few hundred people at events for a while. We will not get normal normal until there's a vaccine. And right now it's looking like the end of the year, but that could be optimistic. Time will tell. I think we're all hoping that by the end of the year there will be a vaccine and things can finally get to normal uh, for real. As it is now, I could see things lasting at least a couple of more months, if not longer. All right, guys, that will do it for the return edition of No DQ in a video. This is episode number 1131. Thank you all again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click on that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and spread the word. Tell a friend. Word of mouth goes a long way. Let people know No DQ in a video was back. 
Keep sending in your questions at Aaron Rift on Twitter using, using the hashtag PAIV. Take care, everybody. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.